Ladies, gentlemen, and dark crusaders of all ages, this wonderful new addition to the Souls-like genre has just released today, and those of you who are excited for Lords of the Fallen are probably ready to dive in head first and experience it for yourselves. But as can often happen with games like this, if you don't explore every single inch of terrain, you could very well be missing out on something greatly important. So of course today we're going to talk about a nice big collection of items or quests or even just important interactions that are easily missable early in the game, as well as solve this mystery of what the stupidly expensive key is actually for. I'll be doing this in game progression order, so if you want to avoid spoilers, simply jump out once you notice an area you are unfamiliar with, and then you can come back later. Starting off then, a pretty major mystery early on is how to unlock the fire magic vendor, as it's far more complex than the other two types of magic, but rather than go through the whole process here, I'll just mention that we have a video completely dedicated to that, so you want to go and check that out if that's what you're after. Moving on from that though, we have the Umbral Eye of Betrayed Eliard. This is a power-up that you can slot into one of your lantern sockets, but most importantly, it is the first eye that you can even find, even before having the ability to put an eye in your lantern, which makes it even extra good compared to its actual effects because, well, it's the only thing that you even can put in your lantern by the time you actually unlock the ability to put things in. The actual effect of this then is plus one soul flay charge, plus 15% dread resistance, and its secondary socket effect is plus 25% healing efficiency while in umbral. Not bad at all, the soul flay charge is great, of course, and again, this is the first one that you can get. As far as where it is then, right beside the vestige of Marco the Axe. Once you reach this area, you will see a big ornate door, and beside that is a fence with a hole. Transfer the Umbral Realm and activate the platform in front of the fence so that you can drop down safely. Then, once you do, you can soul play the fleshy loot box to find the Umbral Eye of Betrayed Eliard inside. Second then, properly speaking, is the Pale Eye Shield, and this one is a bit further on. Once you have unlocked the proper hub area of the game, spoken with all the NPCs inside and such, you will exit out the Skyrest Bridge outer area, and once you stop walking into NPCs, you will find a descending path of wooden platforms. Just before you get to the bottom of these, swap up to the Umbral Realm to see this massive skeleton platform just waiting to be conquered. Run all the way up and around and through it, and you will get some goodies through here, of course, but our goal is all the way at the end of the path, right beside where you turned into the Umbral Realm, but where you can open up another fleshy loot box, and you'll find the Pale Eye Shield inside. This is a medium shield, so pretty reasonable block ratings, but the big thing with this is that its stat requirements are pure radiance and inferno. So if you are running a magic build but want to use shields, this is a really solid option, especially if you are splitting these two stats to go more umbral sided. Then third, we're going to talk about a specific item and what happens with it. This item is the Pilgrim's Perch Key. You can buy this in Skyrus Bridge itself, the hub area, from Captain Stormond for a massive whopping 9,500 vigor. This early in the game, that is an insane amount. Held is more than 150 50% of the reward that you get for killing the first major boss before you get to the hub area, and Pilgrim's Perch is the next major area that you head to after the fact. So if you want this key to be relevant without having to backtrack, time is of the essence. So as a result of both that and the massive cost of this key itself, you probably have two questions. One, what will this actually get you? And two, is it worth it? Well, let's talk about question one, and then you can decide on question two yourself. As you progress through this level further on, you will find the Vestige of Blind Agatha in Pilgrim's Perch itself. There is a locked door right beside this that can be opened with this key. This one is the real kicker here. This gives you access to a much later game area, harder enemies, difficult progression. All in all, this is actually a very tough area because you will struggle to survive within it in the gear that you have if you access it this way. But the reward potential is also massive. Because this is a later game area, you can find particular particularly high-grade weapon upgrade materials, and some will be on the ground so you don't even have to fight enemies for them. This area then is quite sprawling, but if you can manage to just run past enemies far enough, you will loop around to the outside, and then once you come back in once again, you will keep following this path long enough, and eventually you'll come across a boss. Yes, this is a later game boss, but it's also a very killable one even at base starting level. The first step is to draw the boss out of his little hidey hole, and then you need to go into there to destroy his source of invincibility with a bit of the old umbral suck. Once that's done, find the large staircase on the side of the room and slowly have the boss follow you up the staircase. Then when he's at the top, you just want to fall off the side. You will take very little damage, but he will follow you down trying to do a jump attack and he will take 2000 damage from falling in the process. You can just sort of do this on loop a good six or seven times and you'll just die completely with minimal danger to yourself just from falling, which gets you a nice big weapon from him, which is really good. But more importantly, this boss is worth about 9000 vigor, which if you're counting is almost 
almost the exact cost of the key that we used to get here. As well, once the boss is dead, at the top of the staircase that we used to cheese him is another door that opens with this key, and here you'll find an Inferno spell on a chest called Adir's Hardness, which is a defensive buff spell. Number four, then, is the Perdem Falchion. From the Vestige of Blind Agatha and Pilgrim's Perch once again, you want to backtrack the way that you came from, past the Buckethead enemy, then simply turn right and jump off of the edge to the platform below. At the end of this platform, on the left-hand side, there is a little beam that you can carefully drop down onto, you can barely see it unless you're looking for it, and on that beam is the Perdam Falchion, a little bit of a hidden weapon that you can actually grab quite easily. This is a 22 agility requirement short sword with pretty decent stats, so if you're running an agility build, this is definitely worth grabbing. And hey, there's a way to reset your levels in this game too, so why not pick it up regardless just in case. Number 5 is going to be the Umbral Eye of Rosamund. This is another one of your Umbral Eyes that you can slot into your lantern. This one with the effect being dodging at the right time applies Wither to your attacker, which basically translates to when you iframe an attack, you will do damage as long as you get the follow-up hit. And the secondary socket effect as well in Umbral, you get 15% increased Withered health regen when hitting an enemy, which is nice as well. This one then is found near the Vestige of Blind Agatha, again, taking the path forward forward through the level, you'll realize quite quickly right beside you that there's a little pool of water, and if you go into the Umbral Realm here, the water will disappear and it becomes a traversable area. So cross it to the other side and continue up the path until you find a Mothman guarding another fleshy loot box. Dispose of the moth, ignore the moth, up to you, but if you open the loot box, you'll receive the Umbral Eye of Rosamond. Number six is actually right along the same path, directly from where you got that Umbral Eye, head up the tunnel full of little zombie dudes, and right at the top will be a chest containing the anti-calloed sentinel helmet, armor, and sleeves, which is three parts of a whole armor set neat and tidy collected in a single chest. As far as the actual quality of the armor then, it is one of the heaviest sets you can find this early in the game, which of course means that it will weigh a fair amount, but it also offers pretty significant protection to a lot of different things if you do want to wear it, and it looks pretty cool too, so that's a bonus for sure. Number seven then is the Relic of Perpetuation Amulet. Again, from the same path through that lake, after opening the chest, you will emerge into a large outdoor area with a ton of enemies if you ignore them and head right following the path, and if you are still an Umbral, of course, there will be a little bridge that you can pull towards you and then ride to the other side. There are some dangerous enemies in this little spot, but there is also another beautiful fleshy loot box and inside of this one is the Relic of Perpetuation. This is an amulet that gives you bonus maximum health and quite a ridiculous amount of it too, honestly. I'm not sure if it is a flat bonus or a multiplier, but my health without it is 417, my health with it is 467, which is about a 12-13% increase, definitely not too shabby at all. NOT TOO SHABBY! Moving on to number 8, we have the Bowl of Revelations, and this is a super important one that you can miss far too easily as well. Again, from the Vestige of Blind Agatha, as you progress along the main path, whether using the Umbral Lake Skip or not, you will eventually wind up at this big, open, lower platform. In the Umbral Realm, you can drop down and find another fleshy loot box, but what makes this missable is, of course, that you can only even see these loot boxes in the Umbral Realm. And if you open this one up, you will find the Bowl of Revelations. Bring this item back to Molhu in Skyrest Bridge, and he will now offer you items of power in exchange for boss remembrances. Basically, this is how you get boss weapons in this game, boss armor, and also boss spells. And so, of course, you want to be absolutely sure that you find this and use it with the right vendor to actually make this happen. Then we have number nine, which is another big yet missable thing, which is unlocking the blacksmith and the ability to upgrade your weapons. As you progress through Pilgrim's Perch, you will eventually reach the elevator that rounds back up to the Vestige of Blind Agatha as a shortcut. If then, from the Vestige, you go back down the elevator, right below you, you might notice a cage. Inside of that cage is Gerlinda. She's quite clearly a blacksmith, but the way that you free her and get her to help you out is a bit odd. Specifically, there is a number of enemies walking around outside of her cage, and if you kill specifically the armored one, they will drop a key. They don't look particularly fancy or special, they aren't a mini boss or anything, so there isn't really any indication that killing this one enemy would give you something special, but this key is an item that you can give to Gerlinda, and once you do, she will head back to Skyrest Bridge in the hub area, where you can find her as a blacksmith and get her to upgrade your equipment. Number 10 is actually right beside Gerlinda's cage. Just to the left of it, there is a door in a little alcove that, as you may have guessed, is unlocked with that good old Pilgrim's Perch key that I talked about earlier. Inside the area that it opens up, you can find yourself a heavily guarded item, which is the Warrior's Claw Amulet. This thing is guarded quite well for a good reason, though, as it provides an increase to both your physical damage and physical defense, both of which are pretty major stats for most builds. And that does it for today, everyone. A nice big collection of 10 or so items or interactions that are both easily missed 
and pretty important within the first couple of hours of Lords of the Fallen. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope collecting some of these items makes your time with the game even more enjoyable. I mean, imagine doing the whole game without boss equipment even unlocked, right? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye